Welcome to Ring Theory. One of the most iconic images from Peter Jackson's Fellowship of the Ring is when the Fellowship have left Lothlorien and are travelling on boats down the River Anduin and they come across the Argonath. In this short video I'll be exploring what exactly the Argonath is and what it represents. The moment the Fellowship see them is described in the books. Frodo, peering forward, saw in the distance two great rocks approaching, like great pinnacles or pillars of stone, they seemed. Tall and sheer and ominous they stood upon either side of the stream. A narrow gap appeared between them, and the river swept the boats towards it. Behold, the Argonath, the pillars of the kings, cried Aragorn. We shall pass them soon. Keep the boats in line and as far apart as you can. Hold the middle of the stream. The Argonath, or the Pillars of Kings, was a great Gondorian monument. It consisted of two huge pillars of rock that were erected to represent Isildur and Anarion. Even the smallest of Lord of the Rings fans know Isildur as the man who cut the ring from Sauron's finger and was killed in an orc ambush. But fewer fans know the fate of his younger brother, Anarion. After fleeing Numenor before its destruction, Elendil, their father, arrived in Middle-earth, establishing the northern kingdom of Arnor, whilst Isildur and Anarion established Gondor. Whilst technically Elendil ruled both kingdoms, he mainly dwelt in the north and entrusted the rule of Gondor to his sons, who ruled it together. Sadly for Anarion, he was killed during the seven-year siege of Barad-dûr, in which many elves and men lost their lives. Seeing these statues would have held extra importance to Aragorn, as he would have literally been looking up at the likeness of his ancestors. Both of these great stone figures bore a crown, with an axe in their right hand and their left hand raised in a gesture of defiance or warning to the enemies of Gondor. The Fellowship see these great statues in February 3019 of the Third Age. They were originally built almost 2,000 years previously, in the year 1248. It was ordered by the then King of Gondor, Remendesil II, to mark the northern border of Gondor. It was also to commemorate a victory that he had just won over the Easterlings. All these years later, as the Fellowship pass, the realm of Gondor is greatly diminished, with the Argonath and surrounding areas, including Amon Hen, being completely abandoned by Gondor's forces. I like to imagine at the end of the War of the Ring, when Aragorn takes his throne and becomes King Elisar, that he then orders the repopulating of this area and ensures that the great statues are maintained. One last slightly geeky comment is just how perfect the name of these statues is. The Argonath. It even sounds majestic. It's taken from Tolkien's elvish language of Sindarin, meaning royal stones or pair of royal stones, and it is the perfect sounding name for such a gargantuan statue. Can you think of any other examples where the name of a place or object so perfectly represents its in-world appearance? And what do you think the likelihood is of King Elisar repopulating these areas? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy, and the new TV show. If you liked the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button below.